Hey, it is Chris from Quirky Neighbor, and in today's video, I want to talk about how you know how to prepare your file, what size to make it, what type of color space to use, how um, how many dots per inch do you need to to have your file set to. So we're going to start with a pretty common example, something that a lot of people start out with with print on demand, and that's a simple T-shirt where you're just putting a design on the front like center front and not doing anything fancy like all over print. So it what you every vendor is going to give you information on what kind of files you need. But it depends on the, the particular print on demand supplier exactly how they give you that information. So I found I'm going to look at three different vendors, Printful, Guten, and Printify. And you will we'll take a look at the product pages for this. I found I'm going to use the Gildan 2000 T-shirt. It's something that each of these vendors offers. And we're going to take a look at what they have on the page that tells you how to prepare your files for them for this particular item. So here I'm on print Printful's site. And we're looking at the product page. It tells you a lot of information, what the pricing is, what colors are available. This happens to be a product where they do either printing the direct to garment or embroidery. We're looking only at the direct to garment printing for the, this purpose here. Okay, so we scroll down and they start giving you more specs. All of the vendors will give you specifications about the item. It depends on the vendor exactly what you're, they're giving you. Printful's actually um, expanded some stuff like here, like this material area, fabric thickness and softness scale, et cetera. Uh, but for the moment, what we're, we care about is the file guidelines. Now, when you come down here, they're going to have the description information, but then here they have this nice file guidelines tab. And they give you a lot of information here. So it tells you for the front and the back, it needs to be a 12 by 16 inch file. Now, you will, you'll find out the other vendors, sometimes they give it to you in um, how many pixels does it need to be? You know, they'll give you it, it just varies exactly how you give the they give you the information, but we'll so we'll take a look. So in this case, they're telling you 12 by 16 for the front and the back. Uh, we're not going to look at the label or the sleeve print at the moment, but then they give you more information down here as you go down the page. They tell you the file format, PNG or JPEG, and at least 150 dots per inch. They want you to use RGB color space as opposed which is as opposed to cmyk and so th this will not be a problem whether you use photoshop or canva i will be showing you in photoshop and then they they have this thing here remove print file template guidelines um the pr printful and also guten actually provide template files that you can use right in photoshop and they have uh they have like an instruction slash uh, guideline image in there and then you need to hide that before you actually save down your file. And then a few other tips about the some avoiding semi-transparent designs. That's because the direct to garment printing does there's certain things that do, does not work well on like printing on a t-shirt using this this particular technology. Uh, and oh and this is a this is an important one transparency. So on a PNG file you know you can make the background transparent and you and as they say use it to your advantage the transparent areas will show through the color of the t-shirt so if you have a black t-shirt anything you where it's transparent in the image will show as black you like it won't print anything on the on the garment so you can use that to your advantage in your designing and just some other reminders here we don't they don't print white white ink on a white garment if you're printing on a white garment and you have white in your file they just don't print anything and they let the garment stand through. So Printful has, as I mentioned, file templates that you can download and they have these for all of their products. It's very handy. It's a zip file. You open it up just like any normal zip file. And what you have for this particular item is you have a PDF and they always have some sort of PDF. Uh, depends on the garment. Some of them have more or less instructions. It can be useful to look at them. But then they also have this Photoshop file. So let's take a look at that. 
Now, if you've used Photoshop before, this is not going to be any, uh, you know, any particular surprise. What you see in here, you know, we have layers and we have this layer here, which is um, that I'm clicking on here. That is what you see on, on the image with the maximum print area, 12 by 16 with the little images of the t-shirts. The and what it's showing you is it's giving you an idea of the placement based of this of the image. So you have a feel for where it'll land on the shirt. So this important thing, note, turn off guides when done with graphics. So you do that in here on the layers by turning it off. So really that now, you know exactly how big to make this file. You, you like you would save it off as your design file. And what can be really handy is like you can come in here and image size. Oops, let's bring that over. And you can look and see, oh, it's 18 by 24 pixels. That can be useful to know if you are using some pre-existing artwork that you've licensed or that you've created, it can be very good to know ahead of time, how much space are you trying to fill for this or what's your maximum space? So it can be very useful if you're, as I said, if you're commissioning artwork or if you're doing the artwork design yourself in whatever uh, tool you're using to make that artwork. But in the end, you're gonna, this is a very handy way to, to bring in your designs, say you're doing your design in say Adobe Illustrator, you're gonna bring it in in the end to Photoshop here so you can get it all formatted the way Printful needs it. But as I said, the key thing is here is you wanna make sure you turn that off so you don't accidentally print this on your t-shirt. So, so that is Printful and how they provide the information. They give you a nice handy uh, template. It's It works really nicely and, and they provide it for all of the, the their um, garments, actually all their products. So here's a here's a Guten. Now they're gonna they give you all the same information. It's laid out a little differently. You might you know with pricing and shipping and you know fiber content and they actually give you some really good details breakdowns. And actually, it's interesting. Their pricing varies quite a bit by size and color. So. Just an FYI, this is it's interesting when you start looking at the different vendors, how they do their pricing. They tell you the colors, you know, they don't give you nice little pictures of the, what the colors look like, but they give you the names. But what we're looking for are specs. Here we go, spec printing specs. They give you some very similar information. Uh, they tell you, it, but they're telling you in pixels how to big to make them. And it varies by size of garment. Now, what's interesting is here, their resolution that they're talking about is 300 PPI and Printful asks for 150. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I, I don't really question why, but that I, I simply provide what the vendor asks for. But they also conveniently provide templates. So I've downloaded it once again, it comes down as a zip, you open it up. So here's the Gildan. Now they're providing two separate files, one for size small and one for all the other sizes. Now their files, the extra files that they provide here are actually uh, JPEGs. They are not PDFs. I think you could probably pull those into Canva easily to use as a guide, but I am not an expert in Canva. I tend, I use uh, Photoshop. So that's how I know how to use, that's what I use. So. Similar idea here. So this is uh, the, where you have, they have a layer in here with the instructions, you see the layout. Now let's take a look at the image size on this one. Now this is, this is actually, this is quite a bit bigger than the Prickful file. So 4,500 by 5,700 and at a resolution of 300 DPI. So it's a lot more pixels, but actually it didn't even occur to me. Let me just pull up my calculator and do the math, 4,500 divided by 300. So this is 15 inches wide by 19 inches, which is interesting. Um, I guess they maybe their printers use a little bit different technology. So, but once again, useful to know, and this is where it's good, you need, you know, you, you have to, you choose your product, but you also have to choose your vendor and you look and see what the specs are and that will tell you what you need to make your artwork meet what standard 
And now they're telling you, they're specifically saying save as a PNG if part of the artwork is transparent. Let me pull that up, make that a little larger. Save as PNG if part of the artwork is transparent. Once again, similar information as what Printful had, you know, similar recommendation as we had from Printful. Okay, so that is, um, that's Printful, that's Guten. They give you both written specs, and oh, but they will also provide you actually file templates for uh, that you can use directly in Photoshop, which is really handy. Now let's go to Printify. So Printify, uh, once again, they're telling you a lot of information. Now, just as an FYI, Printify is a little different where they're sort of a marketplace of providers and some products you can choose from a, you know, 10, some, like some of the t-shirts I've seen like eight or 10 different vendors where you can choose from. But what's interesting is like you notice some are United States fulfilled in Germany. Yeah, you know, I think it can be handy for people who want to who do shipping to other parts of the world. Um, but so we're scrolling down, scrolling down, we see pricing, we see colors. But so far, we're not seeing anything about file specifications. What I've learned with Printify is they don't provide templates. What you do is you like you you go to whatever vendor you're gonna you've decided to use if there's more than one and you click start designing and it opens up their design space that and this is where you would start loading your file files and stuff but you have to look here first before you create your files this is where they give you the specs basically what they're telling you is jpeg or png and then they say recommended file size of for this particular item of 3692 pixels by 4800 pixels. So you would have to, you would have to make a file that meets that. And actually, I'm just sort of curious. I hadn't even looked. Let's see if they okay. So this is okay. So this is interesting. So the first one I looked at was this Swift POD. Then I decided to look at Texel Druck Europa start designing their recommended size is 4606 by 5787 so i guess depending on you know the the vendor you choose within printify as well probably you know they have different printers so they can handle different sizes etc so what you know so let's say we're going to go with swift pod now uh you know they're not giving you templates so you have to create your own file so obviously, if you're working in Canva, you, you'd create it there. Otherwise, in Photoshop, you do your new. And you'll probably, you know, if you are winding up using the same vendor all the time, you know, on same product, you're going to want to probably just make yourself a template. So this is this is basically what I the type of settings I use. They're, they're not telling you resolution. They're simply telling you pick number of pixels and, and they'll, I think they scale it appropriately to fit their, the size. So let's just create. And then, we, you know, then you would just start designing uh, from there. So it's, it's interesting um, to see how the different vendors work. Now, I just wanted to show you one last item and that's something that's a bit more complicated. So the t-shirt, you know, t-shirts are pretty stand straightforward and you know especially if you're just starting out you want to do a less complex setup and you know, it's like i'm not going to worry about front back sleeves i just want to do a simple design on the front it's a single file usually you know they tend to range around 12 by 16 to 15 by 17 you know pretty simple rectangular piece of art so what if you're going to do an all over print item that's more complex? So let's take a look at something just as a little teaser so you can get a start thinking about other products you might want to use and what it might take to do the design for them. So I'm looking at on Printful site, we're looking at what they call their all, all over print minimalist backpack. This is a kind of product where what happens is you're basically designing the fabric and then they print the fabric, cut it out and stitch it together. So it is a true custom made product for you. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the, the basic components like the straps and the zippers are all the same, but everything else is about 
is is your choice. So you notice here they have front top panels, bottom panel, and they tell you the print size. And then they have similar to what we saw in the T-shirts. They tell you DPI, color space. Now here they're talking about full bleed images, and that's because of um, the nature, the manual nature of cutting fabric out. They need to have a little uh, wiggle room, you know, you, uh, to make sure that there's no, you know, white space where you don't want it. So they provide it once again, they provide a template. So you wind up with three separate files that you're going to have to submit. We have a bottom panel, a front panel and a top panel. So let's take a look at each of at all of this. OK, so we are here in Photoshop and I've opened all three of the the uh, template items now. What's actually kind of cool with how they've set up these particular all over print ones is that you notice like where there's like you see all the uh, little checkerboard stuff. That's a transparent part of the of the um, of the this particular document. So what you can actually do, and I find this really handy for like moving stuff around, you know, fig figuring out where things should go. Okay, so I've just created a filled rectangle, but what I tend to do. Is I'll move the guy to hit a top of it, and you can move stuff. I'll move stuff up and down as I'm designing, just to get a feel for everything is. And so I, I put the guide layer on top of my filled rectangle, and because parts of the you know turn off the rectangle, this stuff all here, the little checkerboard is transparent. It's basically showing through what's underneath, so it can really give you a good idea of where your design will be placed. So you have to take into account your safe area and I'll probably have to I'll go through like a design thing at some point with doing these all over prints, but it just to give you a feel for what what kind of files you're looking at. So you'd have to design here. So this is your top back panel, your top front panel. And then here's the front. And, you know, so obviously, I mean, I think that's self explanatory and then the bottom panel. So this is the part that goes like on the bottom and then up the sides about two thirds, a third of the way or so, uh, you know, you can actually get a feel if you look at this is where when you're doing this kind of thing, it helps to look at the item itself. So like this right here is your front panel. This down here on the left hand side, you see here, that's part of the bottom panel. And then your top panels is the stuff that goes up or across the top and down the sides. So Regardless of how complex or simple the layout might be for your item, you, the vendor is going to give you information about what type of file to submit and how big it needs to be the spe the, and various other parts of the specification. And they give you tips on how to create what to do with the file, a few design tips about transparency, et cetera, that work on well on the particular product for which you're designing. So if there's any questions you have related to this designing process, uh, just the mechanics of it, you know, put, them below, put your questions below. I do want to do some additional sort of tips and tricks that I've been learning as I uh, go through these design processes, because I'm, I'm learning about design as I do this and also just learning about the tools themselves. Actually, I'm, I'm still sort of sort of between like beginner intermediate and photoshop um, i'm still learning there's a lot to learn but anyways i hope this was helpful and i'll talk to you later bye bye